Good evening and welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Lord. The Brave struggles at the plate continued, Alex, and this one was one of the more frustrating ones because you go 0 for 14 with runners in scoring position. You had some hits. You had so many opportunities. You make it air. They tie the game. That ninth inning or that tenth inning where you, where you start with the ghost runner on second was it was just some of the worst at bats by the middle of this team's order, and it just perfectly encapsulates the struggles of this team so far. And I know we've constantly been like, Hey, don't worry. And listen, it's going to be better. We're not the worst offense in baseball. I can tell you that, but I think it's fair to say we're not the best. Like I, and we were clearly historically great last year, by far the best. So let's talk about the reasons why this team is not the best other than and what we have to worry about and what are the concerns with this offense. And we can start just go by position by position and we can pass like, for example, Ronald Acuna first. He's obviously struggled, right? But but I'm not worried about anything with Ronald Acuna. Like it's going to come around. He's one of the best players in baseball. I can firmly say that I'm not worried about Ronald Acuna. Now let's go to Ozzy Albies. Anything to be worried there? The one thing I'll say about Ozzy Albies, not necessarily offense. I do think the offense will come around. The defense sucks. Yeah. The defense is terrible. Yeah, it's been it's been trending this direction for a while now. Uh, like, I'm talking more than a season and a half plus. It's been trending to, like, not only is Ozzy Albies, like, oh, he's not where he really was once. He's, like, talking about one of the worst infield defenders in baseball in terms of, you know, outs above average and all the metrics. It, it's terrible. And, frankly, it happened before Ron Washington left in terms of where it was trending. I don't really know what it was. You know, maybe a surgery, maybe something. I don't really know. Ozzie Albee's bat is never going to be an issue for me. And I know he's going through a lengthy slump right now. But I do believe that he'll eventually come out of it because when, you know, look at the the, the back of his baseball card, you know, suggests positive regression is coming. Uh, but defensively, I don't know. So, I mean, it, it's not even like, oh, he's just a little bit below average. No, he's one of the worst infield defenders in baseball. No, he has a, he has a, one of the worst arms, even at second base, where you don't necessarily have to have an arm. And it really shouldn't even be something that you notice because you're not making big throws. But it is something that you notice, which is very alarming. And then beyond that, his range has just gotten worse year after year. And he, yes, he's one of the worst defensive second basemen in the game this year. Hopefully it gets better, but I'm not sure it will. And I, you have to think some of these injuries maybe that he's had a lot of he's had a lot, he's of, had a lot of injuries maybe have just caught up to him I don't know maybe it's something he gets out of but that's that's the one thing I know it's not offensive but I feel like it has to be said third I know he's not playing Austin Riley kind of like in the same breath of his Acuna I'm not worried about Austin Riley he's been just you look at the last three si seasons it's Mr. Consistent it's 850 to 900 OPS it's now gold glove defense at third base like Still a really good player. He's off to a slow start. But what do we always say about Riley? I mean, when the summer months come, the June, July, and August is when Austin Riley seems to kind of a switch turns. The ball starts flying out there. But I also think it's a comfortability thing, getting those at bats in. Hopefully, it might take him a little lo longer after this, like, I really, he's not on the IL, but missed time stance. Still not worried about him in ter terms of the long-term outlook of things. I would put Austin Riley, you know, and I'm, I'm grouping them because they – nobody should be concerned about them is Matt Olson, Austin Riley and Ronald Acuna. And obviously Acuna is above them. Riley is above Olson, but Olson is still right there. And I couldn't agree more that nobody should really be all that worried about Austin Riley or Matt Olson because they have shown, uh, you know, an ability to come out of these slumps and, and, and you'll, you'll look up and Austin Riley slugging 900 over the course of, you know, June 5th to July 20th. Uh, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, that's him. And the OPS will start creeping up back uh, over 900. And, and then everybody will kind of look back and be like, oh, yeah, I guess it was just another one of those slumps. And Matt Olson is fully back. Uh, you know, I, nobody should be concerned about him anymore. Now, the conversation after those two guys is where it really gets well, started. I uh, see. I disagree. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm not going to say that I'm concerned about Matt Olson. But the, here's the thing. We're talking about why this offense isn't what it was a year ago. And the thing is, Matt Olson, what we saw a year ago, we're never going to see from Matt Olson again. That was the best year Matt Olson will probably have over his entire career. I doubt he ever uh, sniffs 50 home runs again. Maybe he does it one other time. He had 54. He led all of baseball. He had this historic year. We're all like, oh, yeah, like he's better than Freddie. The reality of the situation is Matt Olson is like a two time all star. He does have really high peaks and he has really low va uh, valleys. He's a much streakier hitter than a guy like Austin Riley on a terms from a year to year basis. And I think the 
difference in what we're going to get from Matt Olson is a lot of times we're going to get that Matt Olson from year one over the course of an entire season compared to year two. And I think that's what you're saying. Will he get it, get you an 800 OPS? Will he hit 30 plus bombs? Absolutely. Will he ever touch or sniff 54 again? Highly, highly doubt it. So I think, I mean, that's a pretty big gap from what we saw last year. And then you think if he just has a year like his first year in Atlanta. And I think, I mean, that's I a, mean, a four or five war gap. I mean, that's a big I, gap. I, I disagree vehemently that he might not ever sniff 54 home runs, but the first year, like everything, it's somewhere in the middle. I mean, his first year, he still had what, like an 830 or 840 yeah. OPS. And then he had an a, a, just over a thousand last year. Like everything, it's somewhere in the middle. He'll probably hover around 900 by the time we're we're done looking at this. And I think he's much closer to a. I think he's much closer to the guy we saw last year than he was the first year. Yeah, see, that's where I disagree. I yeah. think he's much closer than the first guy. I think you you might see a five, maybe a six war season out of him over the course of this next contract. Maybe he has one more big year, but I think most of the time it's going to be around that four war, and that's a huge gap from where you were last year. Still a really good player. I'm just saying. I I think. We all got, oh, yeah, Matt Olson's just going to hit another 50 home runs. He's just going to hit another cl close to 60 I mean, nobody runs. has hit more home runs than him over the last, like, three or four seasons. Yeah, I mean, he's good so, for 30, 40 bombs every single year. I mean, he's yeah. going to sniff the top of the home but run he's, leaderboard he's every not, single he's season. He's not a guy that hits for high average. He hit the no, best I, average I of do, his career. No, I do agree with that, that he's not a 280 guy. Like, last year, that was an anomaly. But the 50 – I mean, I think – I don't. I'm speaking out of my butt here, but – I think since like 2019, there literally hasn't been somebody who's hit more home runs. Now, obviously, he's played the most game. Aaron Judge missed a ton of time and things like that. But he is still arguably the best power hitter in baseball. Up there with Judge. Up there with Alonzo. Up there with the best. I, I, I don't think. Yeah. No, he's not going to hit 280. But he's not going to hit 280. 250 and 45 home runs is pretty nice. Yes, and I think that's going to be like the peak of what we see when we see Matt Olson at his best. I don't I, like this year. I obviously don't think that's going to happen. I just think. There's a big gap from what he's going to be, you know, from last year. And I, I'm we're, like, listen, I'm not saying he's a bad player. He's not a bad player. He's going to get hot at some point and go. And you know, when Matt Olson get hot, nuclear. it's scary. It's scary. Right. Like he's a hundred percent. That is going to happen. And he's going to hit 30 plus homers. Hopefully he hits close to 40. Yeah. I'm just saying what he did last year. And we're talking about the differences, right? right. And we talked about this before the year, like, it's almost going to be impossible for these guys to live up to what they did last year. I mean, we're talking about a career year from Acuna, career year from Matt Olson, career year. The uh, only one who's doing it is Big Bear. <laughs> yeah, career year from Big Bear. And like, yes, now we can go to Big Bear. Obviously, there's nothing we can say we worry about this guy. I will say if there's one thing to worry about, regression has to come, right? Yeah. Like, you have to think, like, we, we talk about the pitching regression. Well, Marcel Azuna can't possibly have a thousand OPS all season, can he? I mean, I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, like the last. I mean, he's one of the best hitters. I mean, he nearly won a triple. I know it was the shortened COVID season, but he nearly won the triple crown. I mean, the guy is a good hitter. Yeah, yeah. Last year was an anomaly, though, in terms of his career. And then numbers. this year's been even better yeah. to start. So it's like where like you got to think i mean at some point there's going to be a slump here for marcel zuna but i agree he's playing unbelievable let's not even try to talk that <laughs> into existence but then after that you're really starting to think then you're talking about michael harris like i i, I want to say i firmly believe michael harris is who he was over those first two years and he's going to get out of this because he started slow last year and then went on a tear but you know there are some concerns that he might not be able to live up to that i think i would say uh, yeah, I mean the chase rate. Uh, the the obvious ones are are clear, and it feels like they're fixable for Michael Harris, especially for a kid one as young as he is. Two has not seen a ton of baseball in terms of you know if you're comparing them to the Rileys, to the Olsons, to the Acunas of the world. Um, you know, I don't even want to put Acuna in that. Um, and the work ethic and talent is clearly there with a with a guy like Michael Harris. So you know, obviously the chase rate is is, is abhorrent. It's terrible. I, I, it's got to be fixed. He's never going to be able to contribute. Um, you know, at, at this level like we've become accustomed to, like the first few seasons. If he doesn't fix that, I'm not as concerned as with Michael Harris because I am very high on him, and it's personal. It's you know, I do have a little bias in it that he is probably my favorite Brave. I still, he's the most athletic player on this team. I think he'll be able to figure it out. 
Yeah, I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not too worried about the long term career of Michael Harris. But you know, these are understandable struggles for a guy that's 22 years old. And again, we're talking about right. why is this team not living up to the historic standard or even coming close to it? And you look at this, and you're like, well, maybe Michael Harris is going to take a little bit of a step back before he goes forward and has right. maybe that MVP campaign. And then after that, you really get into the nitty gritty because Orlando right. Sar- RC is what he is. You know, he's a below 700 OPS guy. And he's been that way his entire career. He's, he's, it seems like we've squeezed every bit about him. I know he had a big game last night. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like, it's just like he's not the best player. But he's really good defensively. Like, the lineup, like, that's just kind of his spot. Right. And nobody would be concerned about Orlando RC if the other guys were living up to or, – or, or performing up to their abilities. You nobody would it. be – but and now, you know, the worst looks even worse when everybody is not really pulling their weight. And, and I think you're correct. I mean, anybody who was, was kind of assuming Orlando – Arcia was that all-star uh, shortstop that he was in the first half of last season uh, is very foolish. Uh, and, and, you know, going back to the Matt Olson thing, I do think Orlando Arcia is far closer to this player uh, than he is that all-star, you know, that he was in the first half of For last sure. season. For sure. I mean, there's no doubt about it. The guy was playing out of his mind. It was the best, you know, months of, of, yeah. of stretches of his career by by a country mile and he's right. been in this league for seven years. So yeah, it, it, he is what he is. And he's a $2 frankly, million dollar bargain. He yeah. plays good defense. He plays like, great defense. Yeah. So, I, so who, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's bad when nobody else is hitting. Correct. He's the guy that you're kind of relying on, on the back of that lineup when you shouldn't be relying on. No. Him. And then the, the catcher spot, not worried about Travis Darnard's hit really good. We saw Sean Murphy at a home run yesterday in his first <laughs> rehab assignment when those two guys are tanning and that's one of the best catcher dudos. Nothing really. I have to say there. The last spot, though, I think is the biggest question mark. And I think it's the one where if you're looking at this Braves lineup, you really have a chance to make a move at the trade deadline if this continues. Jared Kalanick has basically been an automatic out. I mean, the guy has a 170 batting average since since April 17th. Uh, very little power, which is, I think, kind of a surprise for all of us. We kind of thought he would at least be able to hit some home runs here and there. And maybe that does come. Adam Duvall, I don't know if it's not playing as much, but he's really struggled. I, I I hope I really believed in this group coming in being at least as good as maybe Eddie Rosario offensively just hasn't been the case thus far. And if it's not the case in the trade deadline, it's the one area where, as we saw in 2021, very easy to find outfielders that can come and make an impact. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if they tried to make a move at that area. But as of now, it's not going to happen anytime soon. And you got to just hope those guys get out of it. Yeah, it's balancing, you know, the win now of, hey, we need somebody to contribute because we're trying to win a World Series while also letting your investment kind of pan out in Jared Kelenic. You did invest him. He is under contract. He's still got the potential. He's still adjusting like that. It, like in terms of think, you know, he has a, a decent sample size at the major league level. But since coming to Atlanta and making adjustments to his swing with Seitzer, it's a tiny sample size and it could take an entire season for him to get fully comfortable. And we kind of see that power. He's never going to hit for average, but when you hit for power and you play fantastic defense, that's more than enough. And I think it's going to be really hard for Alex Anthopoulos to kind of balance that. Let's see how the investment works out with also like, all right, enough is enough. Stop the bleeding. Let's get somebody in there who can at least give us some pop. I don't think it's that difficult because at the end of the day, if this guy's hitting like this going into the trade deadline, you gave him enough at bats and it's not like you're giving up on him. It's not like you're trading Jared Kalanick. Like you still have him under contract for four more seasons. He can come out there, earn his job back next season. But if he's not hitting by the time the trade deadline rolls around, like you got to go ahead and try to win right now and take care of business. You gave him plenty of opportunities. That's a four months. Yeah. See, even then I just don't, you know, I I just think it could take a long time to see him kind of settle in. Well, they're not Uh, going to and and, 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 and I agree, though, that like you could do both. You could very well do both, but you're also risking uh, a, a clearly mentally fragile. I don't want to really put him in that realm, but like he has struggled mentally, you know, with the with the Mariners. We saw that the whole broken foot fiasco, you know, benching him terrible for the confidence. Again, that's what I'm saying. Balancing the, you know, t- World Series is first. I don't I don't give a crap about Jared Kellenick's feelings and neither should he or Alex Anthopoulos, but that's just the dynamic I'm talking about. Yeah, I just uh, to me like if you, if you cannot, over- it is a no brainer. If you can't I overcome am- something like that, you're not going to make it at this level. Like at the end of the day, like, especially if you can't understand the fact that you played bad baseball for four months. And now we're just speaking in hypotheticals. He could come out there, really 
do great over the summer months and would never even have this conversation. Yeah. But it's the one area where the Braves can easily upgrade. It won't cost them a top prospect or anything like that. And it has the potential to be upgraded if he continues to struggle. And, and really the rest of this lineup is kind of set in stone. So that's the reason why I look at that spot as the potentially place for the Braves to upgrade. 